The final verse of that song we've just sung uh, speaks about the hope we have as we long to see the restoring of creation. Sometimes when we look at the mess the world's in and the abuse of creation, the abuse of one another through unkindness, lies, greed and, and so on, it can feel quite overwhelming and as if restoration and renewal are, are just not possible. But with God, there is always hope. And that brings us to our gospel reading, which Graham is going to read for us now. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she went over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thank you, Graham. When we began this series on creation, our gospel reading was from the start of John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and we noted how it echoed the start of creation, talking about Jesus as the source of light and being the light of the world, um, of, of all mankind. So it seems fit that we now end this series with the resurrection story that comes from the end of John's gospel. That resurrection day is often referred to as being like the first day of a new creation. Wonderful that it's revealed in a garden and again echoes back to Genesis. The hope for restoration after despair is seen clearly in the resurrection of Jesus. Coming out of the despair of Good Friday, new life bursts into the world. Well, rather than burst, actually, it's more like a whisper than a shout. A whisper of good news to pass for us to pass on to others. God is at work, even amidst all the mess of our world. It's sometimes said that we live in the time of Easter Saturday, waiting for, for the fulfilment of Easter Sunday, um, when there is a resurrection for the whole earth. But while we're waiting in that Easter Saturday time, there are thing God's, things God calls us to do, to play our part in living out our faith. We've been working our way through this book by Ruth Valerio, and so I want to end by reading a bit from the last couple of pages. She says, We now know biblically that we are called to look after our common home, and yet somehow we fail to take serious action in our own lives. When we know the terrible condition in which the majority of farmed animals are kept, why do we keep buying meat that supports those systems? When we know the immense destruction being done by climate breakdown, why do we refuse to change our flying and travel habits or make a simple decision to eat less meat and dairy? When we know that plastic is causing so much damage to both people and the wider environment, why do we not take easy and obvious steps to use less? When we know our governments and businesses need us to push them to make large-scale changes, why do we stay silent rather than joining our voices with others? And she calls on the church to awake like a sleeping giant. 
She urges us to pray, um, to act, and as part of our action, to give generously. And she then says, as we pray, act and give, day seven of creation reminds us that we do so as part of a Sabbath rhythm. Yes, the problems are immense and there is much to be done, but our actions must be held within patterns of rest and stillness amidst activity. And the words of our next song, I think, are a comforting reminder that we don't act alone. We partner with the Spirit when we come to God in prayer and as we seek to take action in his world. <laughs> 